Matt Paulson, it's episode four of the Handy Homebrew Show. Today we are looking at our three-part series of different techniques and how to brew. Okay. What is the first one we're going to do? Shit, I don't remember. Oh, I do remember. It's called the brewing back technique. We actually have broke-ass brewing expert Jimmy <laughs> McDowell here with us. <laughs> Welcome Jimmy. to the show, Jimmy. Thank Welcome you. Thanks to the for show. having me. Uh, we had to actually drive him up here himself because he ain't got no car. <laughs> he ain't got no car. Um, but we are looking at a technique called brewing bag, which is a, it's, it's a nice, creative way to get into home brewing that's not too expensive for, right. for the first time home brewing. Right. So first thing we want to ask, Jimmy, Matt Paulson, you got some questions about this technique, don't you? I do. Just a couple. I've never done brewing a bag myself, and... Uh, the only thing that I've actually read about it is it's kind of a gateway drug to an all-grain system, but you're tired of uh, messing around with the extract. Is, extract. That, uh, yes. is that pretty accurate, Jimmy? Yep, that's that in a nutshell. Um, well, the first question I have for you is uh, what kind of equipment do you own to make a brew-in-a-bag beer? So, started off with the Mr. Beer type equipment, so just the small two-gallon batches. Um, now I'm, like you said, I'm, it's a gateway drug, getting right. into that grain, all grain. Right. Uh, so now just, I've kind of doubled up my Mr. Beer equipment, um, so I can do about five gallon batches at a time now. Right. Um, and that's really about it. You're okay. doing it on stove top, right? Yes, on stove top. Big still. old pot. Actually, I actually I break my five gallon batches into half. So you didn't two, have to. You didn't have to buy no, a big no, pot. You got no. whatever you had in your house. Yes, yeah, still have um, a ten gallon pot. Now, when you put the grain in, how do we keep the grain separate from our boiling uh, water, which will eventually become our wort, just like a just like a mash tun? How do we separate that out? Just a very cheap paint strainer uh, filter. You get it at Home Depot, any home improvement store. Oh, right. So a nylon right. bag. Yeah, nylon bag. They're white. Kind of looks. Like a, a filter, basically. You yeah. just, and you put all that grain in yep. there. And the, the thing about it is you want to make sure that the size of bag fits with the size of pot that you're okay. using. Because there's a uh, like an elastic band that okay, goes around right, it. right on the top. So oh, that, okay. that holds the bag in place. That way the bag's not dipping down. You're not losing grain into your wort. So it's kind of like a giant tea bag. Basically, Basically you're, yes. you're steeping, yes. you know, four or five pounds of, of different grains, just like you would do a mash right. for an, an all-grain brew. You're steeping it in this water uh, at about 152 degrees. How do you control the water temperature on your stovetop? Just uh, frequent checks with thermometer, and then just, just dial it in. Just a, a dial it in, because again, I'm I'm not on gas yet. I'm still electric stovetop. So. I mean, gas right. probably wouldn't be that much harder either. No, though. you would think you just turn it on, you turn it off. You kind of toggle it to make sure you're sitting in that. Right. It's no different from putting it in a in a in a, in a cooler style mash tun. Right. <clears throat> you know, I have a comment about the uh, paint strainer bag. Not only can you use it for a brew in the bag system, that's what I use for my hop spider. You know, oh, when yeah. I do my boils and I don't want all of that hop trip to I get to the too. bottom of my boil pot, I just use a paint strainer bag from And Lowe's. they're not expensive, right? Like five for about 10 bucks or I so. I think so. Yeah. Five five-gallon paint strainer bags. So we got a pot on the stove. We fill it with the amount of water you need for your beer. Mm -hmm. You put your grain in. It's not boiling yet. It's at a temperature just like we would have mashing. It's right. at a 150, 152, 154. For that hour, it's sucking up all that goodness like a giant tea bag. Then you remove your grain. Yes. Then you boil just like you regularly would. Yes. You've collected on the stove. You boil for one hour. You add in your hops in. Right. You add in whatever additives you have. Exactly. You're on your schedule. So it's just like it's it's like doing an extract, except for you're not filling with the can of uh, of condensed extract work. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's probably a little bit cheaper in the long run. It is. Right. So it that's is. what I was going to say, Jimmy. For about a for a for a five gallon batch, what's it cost grain wise? Yeah. Grain wise, about ten bucks for a or. Oh, I, Twenty bucks, because I again I break you split it. Them. I break you my split. batch. You do it twice. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So I and see. you can go to your local your your local homebrew shop and just buy whatever grain you want. A pound of it here, five pounds there, half pound. Just store it up, and you can just do on your. Now you wouldn't have to do five gallons. You could do one gallon batches in jugs, right? And do some real crazy specialty mashes and stuff. Different right. temps, different adjuncts, different hop schedules, and all that stuff. So it's probably a really good way for the big brewers to do uh, experimental. Yes. Uh, right. Style of style of batch. I kind of right. like it. I've never did brew and bag. I jumped right from extract. I did the same thing. I mean, now actually, there's a, there's a gentleman, and I'll 
add his link to the, the bottom down here. We'll add a, a link on how to brew and bag and some of the good uh, data we found on brew and bag. But he is a, a nationally renowned home brewer, and that's all he does is brew and bag. But his are 15-gallon batches, and his bag is attached to a pulley system in his garage. That's how he pulls his bag out. <laughs> you got to crank it up, uh -huh. and it pulls it out, and it all drains in, and he boils and, and, and all that stuff. So anything else we need to cover on this brew and bag technique? I, there, man? I do want to say one thing I saw a couple months ago. There's an actual website, and we'll go ahead and link it to the video. It's a, a brew and a bag website. You can actually custom order bags. Bags. And they will make you bags for pots. They'll make you bags for coolers. They'll any make shape. you any shape, any, any size. Right. And I thought, wouldn't that be a great idea? I don't really want to brew in a bag, but you line your cooler with this bag. And it's your false bottom. And you mash in there. You don't worry about stuck sparges yeah. anymore. Cleanup is literally you lift the bag out. Throw it out. And dump it into the trash bags or a trash can. So spray it out with a hose. Would you guys say that that brewing bag is is an underutilized brewing technique right now? I'd never even heard of it until I started all grain brewing. I kind of wish I would have known about that before X brand. I think so. I'm a little bit curious and kind of interested in you know doing that one gallon bag, yeah. a crazy uh, beer, just a crazy big Try beer something. maybe. Yeah. Do it in the house. Barley I don't have wine. to get out in the garage and brew on big You're on brewing. Yeah. You're on brewing. Is there anything else you want to add, anybody, on, on brewing bag? Now, remember, this is our first of three episodes on different brewing techniques for your homebrew. It doesn't have to break the bank. We got broke. Uh, uh, bro what is it? Broke back, Jimmy? No, it's not broke back. <laughs> it's it's broke brewer, Jimmy. Broke brewer, Jimmy. Brewing broke Jimmy, who we had to pick up off the bus about five seconds ago. We gave him some money for some bread. He's got some bread money. I'm probably going to use that yeast strain later, too. Right. Um, but this is our first. We'll add some links. We'll talk more about Brew and Bag. We might even do one on the show here. Uh, we'd like to thank our special guest uh, special guest host, Broke Jimmy, uh, Matt me. Paulson. Uh, we still got our favorite segment coming up. Uh, uh, Matt Paulson, what is our favorite segment on the show? Parts and Picks! It's time for Parts and Picks! All right, and it's episode four. It's time for our special guest, Pints and Picks. What beer are we looking at today, Matt Paulson? Today we are looking at a Deschutes Fresh Squeezed IPA. Everybody knows how I feel about IPAs. I love them. Uh, Give a shit how you feel about IPAs. It is 6.4% and at 60 IBUs. That's a pretty balanced IPA for today's IPA. It's not in the, the 100 range. Now, we are pairing our IPA today with a pick by our, our special guest host, uh, uh, Broke Brewer Jimmy McDowell. Jimmy McDowell, what are we looking at today for our pints and picks? We are looking at a classic, The Running Man. Running Man, this is a classic. Now, for those of you that don't know, Running Man stars Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1940s. It takes place in the future when... Game show contestants are picked from uh, convicted murderers, and they put them through like a Hunger Games style of gauntlet to see who survives. And it's called The Running Man. It's a game show. Arnold Schwarzenegger's a contestant on it. They found out there's a lot of uh, issues going on, and he gets to the bottom of some things. If you like gratuitous 1980s action flicks, The <laughs> Running Man is the movie for you. Now, why do we like watching The Running Man while drinking to shoots IPA? Because we don't have to pay attention to this shit. That's, That's right. Why. That's right. Let's get in here, fellas. You want to know something cool? I've seen that movie. You have not? <laughs> yes, I That's have. the first one. Four <laughs> episodes. <laughs> That's the first one. Matt Paul's. I didn't think you owned a TV. I, I was getting that point. I right do. There. I do. I'm talking this out. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the aroma on this. Really, really good. Yeah, good aroma in there. Some good Got some pine. Simcoe. Yeah, Simcoe. Yeah. Um, mm. Good body. That's a good flavored. It's not too bitter. It's got a lot, no. a lot of mouth feel. No. Very cool amber cover. It's still hazy. A lot of these beers now are, are coming out crystal clear. This is a haze beer. It's probably unfiltered. Right. I don't know that for a fact. Doesn't say that on the bottle. This is a good one, guys. This is a good beer. This is a juicy beer right there. It's any, really good. Any other comments on this one? Um, I don't think so. Other, I think that sounds good. comments on The Running Man starring Arnold Schwarzenegger? This guy was a governor of a freaking state. <laughs> of a, the biggest state in the union. Are you serious? That's awesome. Anything can happen, children. Anything can happen. Well, we would like to thank the Shoots for sponsoring us. We'd like to thank Arnold Schwarzenegger for not suing us or kicking our asses. That was very nice of him. Right. We'd like to thank our uh, uh, guest host, Jimmy McDowell. Today, Jimmy bringing in the, uh, the Brew in a Bag. We'll leave some more links. We'll do a Brew in the Bag. We'll have him back. We'll talk a little bit more about Brew in Bag. 
Um, well, guys, I think that's about the end of the show. And I like to always say, we're not beer experts. We're just beer enthusiasts. Cheers, fellas. Drink that beer. Oh, it's going.